Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part three of my feature on the audiophile electrician, Rex. If you recall, part one, I had an interview at my house, and part two, I did a little more in-depth footage of how he was diagnosing my existing house and how my layout is. And for the most part, at least with the meter and equipment he had, it was showing pretty good results. And But I am going to do some things that were, well, don't want to tip you off just yet. What I'm going to feature today is a second house he went to. That is a friend of mine who I've featured on the channel before. He has that home down in Galveston that I showed the Estalon Forzas. I also showcased his MBL 101 loaner pair with the REL stack while he was waiting for his MBL Extremes. He got the M6 Magicos. That's going to go to his house in Colorado. I'll do a video on that in the future. And he also got Rockport Orions for a condo he has downtown Houston. So... And then I just did a YouTube short today showcasing his um, Ferrari 812 Superfast. So, guy, he's a fun guy. And actually, I haven't disclosed this on the channel either, but I've been working with him every day. Uh, he's in a band, and he actually has, it's a legit band. He's got a Grammy Award winning bassist that I've been working with daily on creating music videos of some of his studio sessions and music he's created in the past. And so I'll put up a card here. You could actually take a look at one of the videos I created for him. You're probably going to say, why don't you spend that much time on your videos for your channel? But <laughs> anyway, this is a fun project. And it's also enlightening for me to see in a studio environment how they are recording this and then how it translates um, as the end product. And it's uh, so it's helpful for me as an audiophile too to kind of appreciate what should I be concentrating on and what shouldn't I be concentrating on. Um, because so much in the studio, you think <laughs> you might know that you're there or not. I'm actually getting to see them there and how it, this is recorded, mixed, and then translate to a final product. But getting back to the subject of today, we went to his house that he just bought in Houston. It's a big house, 10,000 square foot home that he hasn't moved into yet. And that's where the MBL extremes are going to be. And so because of the power requirements for the four amps, two power cords per amp, uh, preamp, server, all the things, plus the subwoofer towers that are going to be in separate areas of the room. Uh, I brought Rex over there to kind of diagnose where his set his um, system was in terms of the power delivery. He also has a battery uh, generator uh, for his house. And that was the same problem or a problem that Michael Fremer noted when he put his house on a, a battery generator that it also ruined his stereo system. So I wanted Rex to take a look at this house, make sure that when we put the MBL Extremes in there, he doesn't have the same problems and anything we can do right now while it's getting renovated uh, to optimize the power delivery. So this will give you another taste of what Rex does uh, on a different type of engagement. And so hopefully you'll start to appreciate this side of the wall uh, versus the side that most people concentrate on, the last six feet in a power cord. And I'm not saying that that can't make a difference, but hopefully what you're learning through this series is that, man, if I'm worried about and neurotic about that last six foot cord, why am I not worried about all this other stuff that you're gonna hear him talking about? Because at the end of the day, Maybe none of this actually ends up in improving your audible, anything audible. Uh, but are you positioned to probably have better performance if you lower the impedance of the power to your equipment and you improve the grounding? Ground loops are very easy to audible. And then on top of that, when you have subwoofers, amps, all these things plugged in and going at the same time, you want the lowest impedance and resistance to that power getting to your gear to potentially give you the best. Again, we're audiophiles. It's like having a Timex versus a Rolex. Both can tell the time the same, but at the, at the minimum, you want things done right and done to an excessive level such that you can obtain the highest level of performance possible. And everything you're seeing is pretty economical to do with the right consultation you're not having this in fact a lot of this stuff is cheaper than buying some of these power cords so allocating not only your neurosis to the right area and but also your money to dealing with priorities that are higher chance of improving your sound quality and actually another video i'm going out of town 
to a party in Los Angeles this weekend, so I'm going to schedule another video probably on Sunday. Biggest mistakes audiophile make. This video is going to be part of a series, but this is one of the ones I'll be talking about in the future, is that allocating things that you're neurotic about and your money to higher priorities is one of the biggest mistakes that I see in the hobby. So without further ado, enjoy this walkthrough at my friend Steve's house with Rex the Electrician, and I'll see you back here soon. Okay, so now we're over at one of my friend's house who's moving into this new home. Beautiful home. It's going to have MBL extremes, which are very demanding of power. And he's also got a Generac, so we're taking a look at make sure there's no issues. Good grounds out here, dude. 0.4 ohms. 0.4? 2.4. Oh, same as me, I think. Yeah, low. And it's just a single rod. It's probably because uh, it's moist, conductive soil. Ah, whatever it is, they've all been really good. Which is both nice for you guys. Still curious what he's really done here. I don't think this is this isn't bonded in here, right? This is just this is just as power comes in. His neutrals are landing down here. He's not tied in. He would have actually been better to take a ground all the way. I'd love it all the way right there, and then with that. Right now, I'm pretty sure what he's done is he's taken these and landed this onto there, and then he's taken the copper ground that he's running through here. And he's not. Well, that is that's a double lug, so he's double lugged to it. That's pretty good. It's pretty decent. It'll work. Has he got he all down copper? Here, ran through here, and then he's picking something else up to go into the house, so he could be putting a big ground bar or something like that somewhere in the place in the premise for whatever he wants to do. Is he using copper? So it's all aluminum wiring. Oh, that's not so good. So that's, I really don't like that. And even when you get into all of these, too, you get into every one of these, and it's all, all of it's aluminum. So you're coming in aluminum, and then you're leaving aluminum, and these are these SER aluminum feeder pipes and feeder, and that stuff is the stuff I remove all day and makes a significant difference in how your stereo is going to perform. So he would need to get an electrician out here to replace all that? Replace one of them, whatever one goes to his audio. He's going to have multiple panels in his house. So he's got 150 here, probably 150 here, probably 100 here. So whatever went to his primary audio system, I would actually want to change it if okay. I was like really looking for performance. Grounding, you think you can get away with what, how it is I right now? I think the grounding is not bad, but I don't like that when you have to come through these generacs because you, you're bonded in this kind of stuff and you're hitting here and you're putting bonding jumpers for the ground to this. I would rather see this ground come uh, uninterrupted and go all the way up to at least there. Without a second jump. Yeah, yeah, it really should just be coming down into a disconnect switch and run the ground from this. I mean, you're going to have to ground in the disconnect switch, but you could take it as a solid piece all the way up, or at least have a copper bar here. I mean, if you had a copper bar, you could take it into here, like if you put like an outdoor square D switch mm -hmm. on the wall, all copper, like 
like panel board quality, not like home line quality or QO quality. Those are a little lesser and had like a proper distribution bar. You could take your ground bar and land it on it. You could have the tap meter landing on it. Or you could take this puppy all the way up and hit it, but you got to bond the can so you'd have to have a wire come out, come back down and bond into it. You know, the, close, the less points of contact you can make, the better. Better not to go in the contact out and up to there. Better to go up to there, have it one and done, mm -hmm. and run a jumper down to ground this, run another ground wire out from that bundle to ground it. At least for your audio side, I don't care about your house. This works fine for your house. Yeah, so we just need to find out which one is running for the audio system. Yeah, but it looks like he's pretty done with a lot of stuff in this house. You want to look at these panels inside here? Yeah, while he's doing that, I'll take you guys on a quick tour of where the MBLs were dropped off here yesterday. Let's see where they put them temporarily. He hasn't moved into the house yet. I actually get lost. It's a well over 10,000 square feet house. The uh, MBLs are going to go in here. Some orientation, the pool out back, big kitchen, beautiful. Nobody's ever lived in this house. Uh, breakfast area. Actually, there's a second kitchen, believe it or not, right here for staff or you want to keep everything. Dining room, I think he's going to cut all that out. Upstairs, oh, he's got a little place for wines and liquors. Beautiful foyer. Beautiful street with actual trees in your front yard. They, not one of those neighborhoods where they level everything. So the, he bought something special in LA that's gonna look over the foyer. I think it's going to be a dress that Beyonce wore on a cool mannequin. Uh, that's at least the thought process. And it can be like game room, pool, and stuff like um, he's, he wants to get an AV, I mean a uh, flight simulator. He's also in a band, has his own band. It's going to be his studio. They're going to carve out a console area there behind glass and then tons of bath bedrooms. How would you like to wire this house, huh? Joy. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just everywhere you look. So yeah, different people are gonna have different needs for electrical issues. Um, so that's why getting an expert that can look at your situation and then judge what might need to be done for ideal purposes, cost-effective purposes, or definitely um, dangerous purposes that might be noticed. That's what you're gonna wanna. Here's the um, MBL extremes in here for now. All right. So I just want to see if it is. So these are just standard Siemens panels. I bet you they're not even... Well, I don't know that that's a copper bus. I think that's their BR style. It's not CH or BR, so this is aluminum bus all through the whole thing. Aluminum wire to aluminum bus. So not the highest quality for sure. And then we can probably just look at the size of the wires yep. in here. So um, your wine fridge, your dishwasher, dishwashers, your pan and washers, I really don't see it in there. Um, it's a ranch kitchen, kitchen room powder, master outdoor dryer, kitchen, outdoor kit. Are any, those are indoor. Is there another panel? Uh, there's panels upstairs, I believe. I think there's ones in that living room or upstairs. But let's just take a quick gander because this will just give me a pretty good idea of what type of electrician this guy was. What he was looking to do.
14 gauge in here, so the 12, how many 12s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 12, so a warming drawer would be one. Washer is another one. Washer is another one. Laundry is one. Dishwasher, dishwasher. So then all your, I've got a pretty good feeling that all the rest of his little like plugs and lights and stuff like that are on 14 gauge wire. And here's that aluminum that comes in and he lands it on his ground bar down here. Um, you know, his neutrals here, none of his neutrals are up there for like his audio circuits. So you want to be moving your neutrals and your ground, well your neutrals up here closer to this yeah and your grounds i would also be putting them right there by where that is the neutral right there because this is a sub panel so it's separated but see it's all aluminum br okay so not optimal no not really okay well but, we can we can let them know and then well at least his ground measures okay and um maybe there's some small things he can do What's that? Here. Yeah. Yeah, let's just bolt these as walls because they went outdoor. But I don't know, like I always put walls on the outdoor because I don't know if somebody's gonna put a piece of lawn equipment, you know, garden and stuff on. Yep, yep. So I go big, but he's gonna need a lot of outlets with those MBL amps. You're all sweaty. You probably constantly electrocute yourself. <laughs> you got that like salty water all. You're very conductive. Skin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. Dude. You go right through you. And that's 14 gauge wire. At least they wrapped it. I mean, that is. You're hating it if they're not doing that. So that's good. Huh. But it's 14 gauge wire, so it's, you know, and it's probably one circuit mm -hmm. that he's trying to feed all of that. So we're going to have to put something separate for those MBLs, I think. I don't know how you're going to... This is... That's slab. Well, I think they'd run it from the outside. Conduit, maybe. Come in from the outside. You could run it around here and come over there and drop yeah. it down high. That's probably what they would do. The ceiling and come around and make it look neat. Yeah. I'm sure, an architectural and pop it in here and drive it in and then you could probably punch through at about this height. Yep. And put like a quad, like two, and you mm -hmm. can put two full circuits right there. You could actually technically put four, but you're gonna have so much wire in that box of 10 gauge, it would take a very skilled, competent dude to pack it and push the things in. And then, actually, you are running into some trouble because this guy does have a very shallow box here. And that's telling me there's probably load. So this is probably packed. With yeah, it's wood. load bearing wall. Yeah. yeah, and this is like drywall on it with trim over it. So it's probably right up against the wood. So how much can you carve out of that wood? So well, they could do some conduit and paint it white so you don't see it down this column. That's partly why this guy came in with 14. Yeah, they could probably do conduit and just paint it white so you don't see it. I don't know. We'll let people figure it out. How do you run it down it? You don't have to, oh, we're coming from the outside. Um, yeah, if you come from the outside and then punch it through. This is actually the place where I wonder if actually, actually, if we could do more of that. 
Your space is small, but that portable power panel thing that I was saying. Well, I was just looking. What if you put it like over here? Because it may be, it may be paintable and put it right here. But you got a cord running across the floor, right in front of the door. They're gonna have. They're probably gonna have the ends of the door still open, right? And they're probably gonna put the stuff in the center. I don't know. We're gonna have to figure out how he wants to orientate this. But he said he wants it here. Preliminarily, but you know, nothing's been. I think he has an interior decorator who needs to be consulted on all this. So, but these are good thoughts to have, you know. All right, so let's get a little synopsis here. Well, I don't know if this synopsis this is just a little bit of anal, but I got this from like lightning classes. When you're arresting lightning, if you ever have a wire turn and turn up like it's turning up like this little piece right here um the lightning arresting system the lightning will leave the wire it won't turn up oh really yeah so it'll even keep going down and find a different way even if you go too far horizontally like this eight f uh excuse me radio frequency type noise is supposed to act a little like lightning i don't think it's nearly as severe but i'll get anal and do things like when i come to like my ground rod here Instead of taking this down and shoving this down and then coming up with your tip, there's no reason you couldn't kind of come across and come out and point down so that you're always facing down. Interesting. And good grounding would be, I would almost want it to be coming out of here as my primary place almost and just coming right out of there and going straight down into the dirt. Gotcha. And if you're not coming out of there and you're coming out of here, you know, you still want a copper piece and you've got a ground going straight into dirt and then you would have more accessory ground wires coming in to your other pieces here. Your audio one, whichever one this is, being unbroken again, like where you're gonna come off your your, your grounding um, your grounding bar here and up, up uh, um, what am I trying to say? Your feeder wire, you might take all the way up and land here and put a jumper down to make as few connections as possible so you're not going from your feeder into a ground bar, up into a grounding lug system, down and into like a grounding system. You want to kind of reduce as much of that as you can. Gotcha. Optimally, actually, you might even have your grounding going up and happening here in a really nice copper bar. You can go and buy like nice copper bars. You can put them in this type of gutter. So you can ground a lot better if your copper puts your primary bar there and then drop your bonding pieces. You can take your audio one up and land it on that bar. So now you're your bar from neutral tie together up here the ground to the earth the ground from your audio right there and then other accessory ones to other stuff but that would be a pretty tight grounding scheme okay but overall here other than the ground measured good uh it's using the aluminum wire but not sure if that's it probably did get just run right through that wall they're poking into the wall, so he's getting in, and I bet you they brought it up and came across and got across it here and went down. I mean, you got some windows to deal with, but they could also got up in the ceiling joist area, like they maybe popped across the ceiling joist, entered into a wall somehow. You know, we'll see if that's something he decides to change, but just it's good to know. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, probably not necessary, but. If you really want good audio, if you can get rid of that aluminum feeder, you are going to be way better. It's very noticeable. Okay. It, it is noticeable. On a day like today, we should just go record from the pool. He could tap up another distribution box. He could put a panel right there. He could put a little outdoor all copper panel right there. That's true. Right then then his that surface. for his. And then we run this pipe down along outside here somehow, along the outside of the. And run outside. to his, because on the other side of this is where the. Uh, MBL Extreme should be.
there, but I mean, somehow they're getting power to these fans and everything. Punching through that might be difficult, but... And of course, they've got one already right here. This is all going to get painted, so. So that makes it more hideable than like natural. Anyways, if you drop down yeah. here, you core drill a hole. Maybe you could just pick, like, I mean, you gotta, you gotta work it with the inside of the house where you want to go through because you're really ideally your place where you're coming out here is going to be dictated by where that box will be going on the inside. So you core drill a hole through here, get in. Once you do the stone, you get into the wood. You're taking a big auger bit, and you're, and you're in. Okay. And surface not the box. This is your only place, but I bet you this beam isn't even, I bet you this isn't even structural. Okay. Even if it is, I bet you could even take your PVC pipe and have it coming tight, coming down, hit high, drill through at an angle, and get into this space, and then uh, a dude could, a dude could land a box right here. Okay. Put a little box in the corner and then come out with his pipe. So this one kind of just drops into it, feeds into it. Like he can, he can make a little, he's going to drill a little hole and the guy can work it. So you think another sub panel yeah. for his um, yeah. audio system with Absolutely. a copper wiring? Okay. Absolutely. And where would you propose mounting that? Yeah, nobody's ever back here anyway. Yeah, okay. Out of that and right into the top of an outdoor panel and have it right back. You might have to build it out a little to make the face flush with this because there's codes about having a box below it and how far back it can sit. It might, okay. It might give you six inches, but you might need a little something in that panel. Yeah, right there. Bam. Just for the audio grid. Okay. Yeah, so in the top and then out like that. And All then, right. You know, we can make a really good bond in here. Okay, good information. Is this, this, you can parallel lugs in here. This takes two, that takes two. It's a double lug pad, one with a single on each. I love to see that aluminum go away, but that's not that much. That's not this, this amount of this gauge to right there and into your thing. And yeah, you're gonna, so. You got a copper from there. So you got, you might have to change those splice taps. I don't know if they had enough, uh, I don't know if they had enough holes where you can get a splice. But he could, couldn't he replace the aluminum from here to the sub panel? So what I was saying is this amount of aluminum isn't killing okay. All right. the, the wires coming out of here that are smaller gauge like this. And all the way all to the, the panel. Way there, yeah, that's okay. That's hugely detrimental. Okay. Okay, so good. Good information.